Newsday continues here on One News Now. I'm Riza Diaz. Davao City is ramping up COVID-19 vaccination. Their most recent move is to open an inoculation site that's open for walk-in clients this weekend. To tell us more about this, we have Jem Obansenia. She's reporting to us live from Davao City. Jem, can you give us the latest situation? Lisa Davao City LGU continues to intensify their vaccination campaign, especially now that the city is facing another surge of COVID-19 cases. Today, the LGU opened this vaccination site here in People's Park for everyone who would like to be vaccinated. According to City Social Welfare and Development Head Marlisa Gallo, they opened the site this weekend since many cannot go to vaccination hubs during work days. They were happy with the turnout as people poured in to get jobs exceeding their target 1,000 vaccinees. Ambulant vendors, laborers, PWD company employees, single parents, public utility drivers, and senior citizens, it was a mix of individuals that came in today. We also checked another vaccination site in Barangay 19-B and noticed many vacant seats. Councilor Edgar Ibuyan Jr. explained that despite the government's effort to inoculate more Davaoenos, there are some who refuse to be vaccinated, especially if the brand used is Sinovac. Based on the LGU's data, almost 700,000 individuals have already received their first dose of COVID vaccine, while over 400,000 are fully vaccinated. Visa Davao City remains one of the COVID hotspots here in Mindanao. As of yesterday, active cases here is now 9,527. Lisa? Thank you for that update and stay safe. That's Gemma Bansenya reporting live from Davao City. Meanwhile, enrollees for the second year of blended learning has breached 27 million despite pandemic challenges. Education Secretary Leonor Briones said over 27.5 million students have enrolled for school year 2021 to 2022, surpassing last year's numbers. DepEd is still awaiting um, President Duterte's approval to conduct pilot face-to-face -face classes in 120 schools nationwide. The pilot physical classes will cover kindergarten to grade 3 students. The health department denies disregarding the standard shelf life for COVID-19 test kits procured through the budget department. The DOH explains that RT-PCR test kits available in the market last year only had a shelf life of six months. This is below the 12 to 24 months stock life initially required. The agency says manufacturers at the time were not making test kits with longer shelf life since there was no previous demand for it. The DOH said it decided to push through with the purchase, noting as the health crisis began to unfold. The department insists the purchase stock were at par with global standards. Okta says a COVID-19 case surge in Metro Manila may have peaked. Okta Research Fellow Professor Guido David noted a decline in reproduction number, positivity rate, and one-week growth in NCR over the past week. But he adds that efforts to curb infection must be maintained to ensure a continuous downward trend. Meanwhile, Okta notes high case growth rate in the provinces of Benguet, Isabela, Negros Occidental, and South Cotabato. As the world grapples with the COVID-19 health crisis, an expert warns of more COVID-like pandemic threats in the future. This Bloomberg Quick Take will tell us more. There could be worse out there, and that's what you know keeps me awake at night. A smaller number get sick and go to clinics and get diagnosed as, oh, you've got bacterial pneumonia. Then a very small group infects other people and you get these small chains of, of transmission. 
And once every few years, you get an outbreak that goes uh, global. Um, so to get to that tip of the pyramid, unfortunately, you've got to look, at, you've got to start from the bottom. You've got to go to then to clinics and look for evidence of outbreaks and stop those outbreaks. And if you can stop this at the level of individual infections, you've got a much higher chance of stopping the next pandemic. There are tens of millions of bats across the countryside. So that's hundreds of thousands of bats flying out every night, defecating, urinating on us, on our, our, you know, on our doorstep, on our door handles, on our food, in, on our clothes, and we wipe it and we rub our face and we're infected. This isn't about finding viruses and saying this country is a high risk to the rest of the world. This is about finding communities within countries that, that are at risk. And, and trying to block them from getting infected. We'll be back with more stories after the break. Keep it here on One News. You're still watching One News Now. I'm Riza Diaz. Manila Archbishop Jose Advincola has tested positive for COVID-19. The Manila Archdiocese said that Cardinal Advincola is now under quarantine, observing strict protocols. The Cardinal is not feeling any symptoms apart from having a slight fever. The CBCP is asking for prayers for the fast recovery and complete healing of Cardinal Advincola. Cabarines Sur local officials are supporting Davao City Mayor Sara Duterte and the former Defense Secretary Gil Gilbert Chudoro as President and Vice President for the 2022 elections. Former Council Representative Rolando Andaya Jr. said that the majority of incumbent mayors in the province are backing the tandem. Andaya previously said that Tudoro will proceed with a vice presidential candidacy with or without Mayor Sara as running mate. Tudoro and Mayor Sara met in Davao City last June, leading to speculation of a potential team up. There is no official confirmation yet from both parties. Female power lifter Joyce Rebonton is out to show the world the strength of a Filipina, but she will need all the support that she can get as she gears to compete against the world's best. Gretchen Ho has the details. Another female lifter is out to bring glory to the Philippines. Meet Joyce Gail Reboton. The 29-year-old Kapampangan started out as a CrossFit coach but fell in love with lifting heavy iron. She powered her way through and became the country's top power lifter. Noong 
noong 2014, uh, nag-start talaga ako mag-crossfit, mag-workout, workout. Gusto ko magpapayat. Tapos, in-invite ako ng partner ko, si Willard Kapulong, na mag-compete sa local na powerlifting meet. Sa so first competition ko, naka-medal na ako kagad. She has already bagged gold and silver in the Asian Powerlifting Championships. Joyce even holds the Asian record for squat, deadlift, and total in the Women's Open Classic under 84 kilogram category. Nung first time ko kasi nag-compete, tapos uh, napatugtog yung lupang hinirang, nahawak ko yung flag, parang nakakaiyak na, oy, meron akong nagawang something good for the country. Now Joyce is bent on competing in the World Classic Powerlifting Championships in Sweden next month. But funding is getting in the way. Unlike weightlifting, powerlifting is not yet an official Olympic sport. We are planning to send uh, four, four powerlifters. PSC has been funding us since 1992. But of course, we recognize uh, may limitations naman yan. Hindi naman lahat ng gusto namin puntahan eh, mapibigay. But Joyce and her team are not giving up. To raise funds, they've started selling coffee online and even a public funding campaign. Nakakapag-uwi ako ng medal, nakakapag-serve ako sa country natin, or nakakapag-represent ako ng maayos. Pero hindi ko kasing pareho ng privilege yung mga ibang sport. The fundraiser will help send both Joyce and her coach to the competition. Just like her inspiration, Heidi in Diaz, Joyce will need all the help she can get to get the gold. Para po sa mga gusto mag-donate or gusto magdagdag para dun sa kailangan naming amount, pwede po silang magpunta sa Facebook account ko. Meron pinned post dun sa Joyce Gale Reboton. Gretchen Ho, we are one news. Let's now take a quick look at today's other top stories. DILG says 57 areas are under granular lockdowns in the first day of implementation of the alert level system in the metro. A restaurant group sees a better outlook for the industry in the last stretch of the year. This as more people are getting vaccinated against COVID-19. But even amid all these advances against the coronavirus, a health expert warns that the flu season may complicate COVID-19 diagnostics. And those are the top stories of the hour. Join us later at 2.15 as we continue to monitor the day's biggest stories. You can also catch One News on a Signal Play app. Register for a free account now, www.signalplay.com and stream One News Live anytime. Anywhere, I'm Riza Diaz. We are One News.